Hi everybody, it's Julia, your trusted travel expert from Mathis and Travel, helping you find that je ne sais quoi wherever you are in the world. And this week I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the international dateline and how that affects you when you travel. Um, I know for me, when I was just in Asia, time zones, when you cross the international dateline, for some reason they just get really, really confusing. So I actually, before doing this, I <laughs> did a little bit of research to help me help clear it up for you. So when you think about time zones, obviously there are 24 hours in a day, there are actually 24 time zones. Um, London, uh, or it's actually Greenwich, Greenwich Mean Time is sort of starting point. That is the starting point, um, and that's what everything else is measured off of. And so like Europe, Western Europe, which is just one hour ahead of London, that's GMT plus one, whereas the East Coast, we are six hours behind London, so we are GMT minus six. Um, and so that's sort of easy, you know, if it's noon here, it's 6 p.m. in London. Um, and then obviously the East Coast to the West Coast is pretty easy. It's three hours difference. The West Coast is three hours behind us, but they are GMT minus nine. Um, and so the easiest way to sort of try and remember who's ahead and who's behind, uh, because it does get really confusing because somewhere in the Pacific it switches. And so, you know, so the easiest way to think about it is try and think about New Year's Eve and who celebrates the, the new year when. You know, New Zealand is pretty much first of the, the populated world. Uh, new Zealand's first, and then it goes away from us. It goes uh, like to Australia, Tokyo, Asia, you know, India, on around to Europe, and then we're six hours behind most of Europe or behind uh, England, and then of course the West Coast, and then Hawaii is, is generally kind of last. Um, of, of again the populated world and so that's sort of one way you can try and help remember but like I said the the international dateline is kind of funky because in general when you fly east you are you know so if you're on the east coast flying to London you are going ahead of time you are um, losing time which is why jet lag is is pretty rough when you fly east when you fly west you're gaining time and usually that means a little bit more time for sleep and you don't normally have as much problem um getting over jet lag when you fly west now that changes though when you fly west to get east so like for example if you leave the states and go to asia at some point over the pacific you're going to cross that international dateline and so you're actually gaining a whole extra day it usually you know just so you know when you leave the states you aren't going to arrive in that the next destination usually for two days um just because of the way you because of how many hours you jump forward in time which is weird because you are flying west you can some places in asia you, asia you can fly east but it's still going to take you so much time so um just remember that the other thing that's a little confusing about the international dateline is that even though the West Coast is closer to Asia, like in geographical terms, it's just across the Pacific Ocean, the East Coast is a shorter time zone, time zone difference because they're closer to London. It really, it doesn't even make sense. And you wanna know the last thing that is really crazy is if you think about the Pacific, there are all those islands out in the Pacific. You know, I went to Tahiti. Tahiti is actually, French Polynesia is actually in the same time zone as Hawaii. So it is not across the international dateline. But Fiji, which is just a little bit further, closer to New Zealand, is across the international dateline. So even though Fiji and uh, Tahiti are like, you know, I mean, they're not exactly next to each other, but they're out in the Pacific together. They are on a totally different day. And another really, the reason why this really got driven home to me is when I was in Singapore learning about the World War II, the fall of Singapore, Japan um, conquered Singapore, won it from the, the British. Uh, they launched the attack on Singapore, the air attack. Excuse me, my dog is excited about something. Uh, they launched the air attack on Singapore the exact same day or exact same time probably that they launched the attack on Pearl Harbor but Pearl Harbor as we know was December 7th the date that will live in infamy but in Singapore it was December 8th even though they were within a half hour of each other or something insane like that so that's how funkily the international dateline can mess with things and so I just wanted to help you get a little bit clearer of an understanding that sometimes when you fly west you are going to be gaining so much time that the jet lag, it's just a little crazy and the time zoning can be a little bit crazy. Um.